Thanks for sticking around. Uh, let's start somewhere a little simpler. Um, we'll talk about the experimental motivation for this research. My research is primarily in detonations. And uh, well, detonations are fairly complex, as you can see in these pictures. This is a Schlieren image and an image showing the radical mass fractions. And uh, there are different kinds of detonations. There's regular detonations and irregular detonations. And the specific detonation depends on what the actual mixture is made of. We know a lot about the very simple detonations, the regular ones. Um, but shown here is a more irregular. Actually, this is a regular detonation. The irregular ones are even more complex. In detonations, there are a lot of things going on. There's convection, diffusion, reactions. And they're also three-dimensional. Uh, shown here is a, a three-dimensional simulation in Visid. And shown here is a diagram of what's of what's going on. Uh, when you think about detonations, you think about shock reflections. And shown here are points where shocks reflect off each other. And that's mainly the main structure of a detonation and what I simulate. Uh, a lot of work has been done on the regular detonations. And these are detonations that are of hydrogen, oxygen, argon, and uh, other more stable molecules. Shown here is a plot of the stability of a detonation. With more stability, the detonation is less complex and easier to understand. Uh, up here is what I study. This is propane, which is the most unstable detonation that has been studied in experiments. And shown here is propane. There's a lot of range of scales in detonations. There's very small scales and very large scales. You have the chemical reactions, which happen very quickly with thousands of species. And you also have the interactions with boundaries and the interactions with the shock reflections. And you have different sizes of shock reflections, large ones and smaller ones. So how, how do we model a detonation? Well, it's very hard because you have convection and diffusion. And we don't know that much, so we have to start with just the physics. So I do direct numerical simulation. That means no approximations. Well, there are approximations, but we make as little as possible. So we use the full Navier-Stokes equations with chemistry. Um, to solve, that, solve uh, convection and diffusion, you have to use a, a scheme that can do both. It's very easy to do one or the other, but to do both, we use a hybrid scheme. This is our Wino scheme, which uses sixth order accurate stencils. It uses uh, a shock capturing part, the Wino, which stands for a essentially non-oscillatory. And it also uses center difference stencils that allow you to capture the diffusion. Shown here oops, are, is a schematic of the triple point structure I was talking about. This is a shock wave, another shock wave, and a shear layer. And shown here is where we know in red is used and where the center difference is used. We know is very expensive. So you could use it everywhere, but it would be very slow. And it would also give you inaccurate results where diffusion is happening. So we use as little we know as possible. Uh, it's very expensive to simulate detonation, so we use adaptive mesh refinement, in particular structured adaptive mesh refinement. The code I use is AMROC, which is the basis for the parallel computation and breaking up the domain into pieces so we can do multi-scale analysis. Um, Previously, no one has used this Wino scheme to simulate detonations and diffusion. So we had to do a lot of convergence tests. And I have a paper which is just getting published. We started out with very simple cases, just without chemistry, and then moved on to having chemistry and diffusion and multiple species. So let's talk more about those triple point structures. In the detonation wave, there's triple points moving back and forth in time, and when they reflect off each other, shear layers happen, and species start mixing and combusting behind this detonation wave. Shown here is a schematic of a shock wave reflecting with another shock wave. Now, this is a symmetric problem, so we only need to simulate the top half. Also, here's another schematic of a triple point. This, this, the structure is moving this way, and you have a shear layer where lots of mixing is happening. And you also have shock waves. Behind the shock waves, the fluid is heated up and accelerated, and the detonation occurs. 
Here are some simulation results. Uh, shown here is uh, the initial condition and also the pressure, the product, and the refinement levels. The red shows the highest refined section, and the blue shows the coarsest. Uh, the way we start this simulation is we use a steady solution. Detonations are unsteady, but uh, you can't just start off with an unsteady solution. You don't know the solution, so you use an approximate theory to start out. Now, I'm interested in irregular detonations. Earlier detonations, we don't know that much about them, and uh, so we have to start making models. Well, if you want to know about chemistry in a regular detonation, propane in particular, which is one of the most unstable ones, you start with a mechanism. And now the mechanism the chemist gave you has uh, 1,055 reactions in 53, oh, that's a typo, species. Now I can't use that because I put that on a supercomputer and I'd wait 10 million years and then I'd get my answer. So what I have to do is make this smaller and reduce it. So I took it down to 22 species, 22 species and 161 reactions. Now I, I did this reduction and I compared it to experiments and also the original mechanism. And I also tuned it for a different unsteady parts of the detonation solution. Shown here is a solution for temperature for the steady case. Now the detonation, as it propagates, accelerates and decelerates. So shown here is an increase temperature as it's going faster and a decrease temperature as it's going slower. Now these are all steady solutions, assuming that it's not changing in time. But if you, if you match your model to the steady solution, you would expect it would perform better in the full unsteady case. Now shown here are some results that I've recently made for propane. Now, uh, to do this, I had to use a supercomputer. In particular, I used Hopper with 784 cores and left it in the queue for about three weeks. And uh, this was a very expensive computation. Uh, using uh, adaptive mesh refinement, it, if I used a uniform grid, it would be equivalent to having 100 million cells. And for this computation, you have 30 state variables. And uh, this is a multi-scale problem. This distance is one centimeter, and the smallest cell size is about a micrometer. Now, I'll step through and show you the simulation. As you see, this is a, this is a detonation wave, which is a shock wave, followed by combustion or chemical reactions. And it's reflecting off what seems to be a boundary, but is actually be, being modeled as another shock. And this is a substructure of detonations as they go through pipes, through air, in spherical explosions, in piping system explosions. And uh, what you're seeing here is the temperature. You have the incident shock, and you have a shear layer that rolls up. In the shear layer, lots of mixing is happening. And you also have more shock waves that are forming. Now, this is an inviscid phenomena. You don't need to fusion the model those. This is just the interaction between the convection and the chemistry. However, what happens behind that is a diffusive phenomena. You're having mixing. Many researchers in the, pa many researchers in the past has, have modeled this, but they haven't included the fusion. Now, you can get away with that for the regular detonations, but if you want to model hydrocarbons, you need to know what's happening with the diffusion. Now here is another simulation with a domain twice as large. And this is showing the radical mass fraction. As you can see, the results are very pretty. Now I'm going to talk more about what's happening. You have the incident shock. You have the shear layer. This is the pressure. And you also have new triple points that form. You have a reflected shock. Shown here is the reactant. As you see, it's getting, well, if you go in the reference frame of the triple point, it's getting pulled in and spun around. Shown here is a later time. You have new triple points forming on the reflected shock. And you also have lots of mixing happening for the radicals. Shown here is the reactant. At the incident shock, it hasn't reacted yet completely. But inside the reflected shock, it's hotter, and it's reacting faster. 
Now this seems complex, but it's actually even more complex for a whole detonation. And this is just one small piece. In, a, in an actual detonation wave of a hydrocarbon, this is happening all over the place. And all these different triple points are getting mixed with each other. Shown here is another graphic as it's in later time. Now, here's a comparison of if you just do, if you don't do diffusion and you do do diffusion. So this is with diffusion, and this is without diffusion. As you can see here, in the inviscid one, there's a pocket of reactants. But in the viscous part, where you have mixing, heat conduction, viscosity, it's been diffused and reacted more. And also, but you see that there are more shear layers in, with, when you don't have viscosity. Or not, there's more uh, vortices, I mean. When you, when you don't include viscosity and you model the inviscid equations, the Euler equations, the amount of mixing depends on your resolution. So if you want your solution to be better and you use more and more cells, the solution keeps changing. So you don't actually know what's happening. You get the main structures, but you don't know what the mixing is. Now here's one of my larger simulations, and this is for the oxygen mass fraction. And what you see happens here is that the initial shock that was steady has gone unsteady, and it's forming triple points on its own and causing lots of mixing. And here's the pressure. As you can see, we started out with the main triple point, but then as the solution went unsteady, you get many more triple points. There's triple points all along here and all along here. And this is what is happening in a real detonation that you see physically, well, except it's also 3D. These are only 2D simulations. So we started out with one triple point, and we're looking what's happening and how the new triple points appear. And we're comparing the inviscid solution with the viscous solution to try to figure out how the mixing goes into, goes into the propagation of the detonation. Because when you add in other things, boundaries and detonations that are starting from slow-moving flames and other complexities, you need to know how the diffusion works in for these types of mixtures. And shown here is a comparison of experimental picture with these results. As you can see, there's big triple points. And also in here, there's smaller triple points that you can't, hear, you can't actually see because the camera doesn't have fine enough resolution. So in conclusion, I've been utilizing Oak Ridge's Jaguar, which I used to do the verification study, and NERSC's Hopper systems to look at diffusion and detonations. And I've been resolving two-dimensional detonations with these large-scale computers. We compare the viscous and inviscid results, and we look at the differences between irregular and regular detonations. Now this is just the beginning. We're trying to understand the physics. After you start to understand these processes, you can move on to more complex things, such as deflagration, the detonation transitions, interactions with boundaries, three-dimensional simulations. And uh, also, I should mention that these numerical methods are not just for detonations. They're for all kinds of compressible flows with, with uh, chemistry. And I've done other simulations for spark ignition and shock bifurcation. And I'll conclude there and leave it open for questions. Questions? Yes, over there.